Now, you know me, if you've watched me for a while, you know that I often forget to plug in my microphone. Now, what you need to know is, I have had an Escape from Time watch before and it's been a smash hit. People love not only the review, thank you guys, but they love the watch. It's sold out. Everyone's like, oh, I want one now. Sell me yours. Why couldn't I get one? I regret not buying it. Well, I thought, well, if they're that good and uh, they're as impressive as they are uh, from what I've experienced already, I got this vintage watch. They literally call it the Escape from Time Vintage. I, I had a chat with the uh, guy who makes these watches and I said, what's he paying homage to? I can't work it out. And he just told me it's to an old Longines. What an unusual watch to homage. How good could it be? Let's take a closer look. So the Escapement Time Vintage paying strong homage to the 1954 Longines Conquest. Uh, it was the introduction to a new line, which they called the Conquest from that era. And as you can see, let's pop a picture up. This is really, really close to that design. Uh, the original one was a 36 mil case size. This is a 38. So it's a nice balance between slightly old fashioned sizing and more contemporary sizing. 40 mil would have been too big, in my opinion, for this watch. 38, I think, is spot on. So I think that's a great choice. So. What do you get in the packaging? Well, this isn't the standard strap. I'll put it in one of my own um, because I don't quite like the crocodile finish you get on these. Nothing against crocodiles. I think they're beautiful creatures. I just don't like the sort of pretend texture on leather. And the leather is good quality. It's really supple and soft. Very nice. That's what you get as standard. And this is the box. No warranty card or anything in there. I didn't notice or find anything, but it's a pretty generic box you get it in. But... You're here to see the watch, not a box. 61 grams on my strap, so it's still a very light watch for an automatic piece with st the stainless steel. As I said, it is stainless steel. And this is domed sapphire. Very beautiful. Slightly unusual little extra nipple in the middle. So we've got a bit of a nipple bulge in the middle. But you know, at this price point, which I, I paid including taxes and everything, £138 delivered to the UK and it took three weeks to get to me. And the only place you can buy this is from the Escapement Time store, from my knowledge. And it's hand assembled, as are all of his watches, by one man. So it's really cool to know. And I like that sort of story. I know probably a lot of people do that. But I think the finishing of this hobbyist's watch seller is extremely good, especially from my first experience. And what a lot of you guys said, I've looked at a lot of forums and people are generally extremely happy with their Escapement Time watches. So, and I'm one of those people. So we've already got a good start. It's a vintage look. It's paying homage to a beautiful vintage Longines watch. And we've got, it's a lightweight dome sapphire, all stainless steel. And we've got a Miyota high beat 9000 series movement. After this segment, you'll see uh, how well this is running. So it's a little 20 or so seconds. You get to see how good the one is in this one. And the sizes of this piece, well, it's, like I said, it's a 38 mil case size. The lug width is 20 mil. The lug to lug, the length is a really nice stubby little 46.3. The height of the watch is only 11.4, including that dome with a slight nipple sapphire. And the crown's 5.8, which is a good size actually for quite a petite watch, really easy to grip. And the dial helps this look a lot bigger than its 38 mil case size uh, would make you think because it's a 34 and a half mil dial, which is, is big. Just for reference, 40 mil case size dive watches from many other brands uh, only have a 28.5 mil dial. So the, even though this is a 38 mil case size watch, it wears and looks and feels like a, a lot bigger watch thanks to that fantastic dial. So we've got gold plated indices and hands, a little bit of loom in there, very, very, very faint amount. It's almost pointless putting it on, to be honest. It's more of a dressier watch, but it's not really part of a, a dress watch's uh, unique selling points. For me, it's how elegant the design is and how subtle it is. And this is a vintage style. It's going to work really well uh, with more outfits, I think, because it's somehow something you could get away with wearing every day because it's a bit of a classic watch. It makes you look like a gentleman. Now, that's the stats and the specs. You've kind of got a good idea of how big this is and things like that. So the next segment, which we're going to move swiftly on to now, is the movement, how good is the one in this watch, the Myota 9000 series, high beat movement. Then we're going to go on outdoors, we'll come back, I'll see you in a bit, 
and we'll do a final appraisal of this watch and I'll give you my final thoughts, opinions and things I've discovered. See you shortly. Now the 9000 series Moyota is proven to be very reliable, very rugged and to prove how sort of consistent the timekeeping is, I tested this in four different positions and it was only plus nine, plus eight overall for all the different positions. Really healthy amplitude and zero beat error. It's a great movement and it's, it's brand new so it's got a bed in so I think it's going to be a good long-standing timekeeper. So we've had some time with the watch. You've seen it outdoors. I must get it on my wrist, actually. The movement in here is running pretty well. I'd say it could be better, but I'm not going to attempt to regulate this one quite yet. It's not a watch I wear every single day, but I'm perfectly happy with that movement. Things I like are the fit and finish of this is exceptional. Not quite as good, believe it or not, as the watch uh, that I reviewed previously from Escapement Time, which cost half the amount of this. The polishing is as good. I mean, don't get me wrong, the polishing is very smooth and very neat. There's no distortion or rippling anywhere. It's very neat. No imperfections anywhere with the polishing. The dial is really good, very neat. Again, no imperfections or fluff under there. It's just, there's a few tiny, when you look under macro, which you've seen pop up here and there, you get a few little imperfections or tarnishing uh, things that you can see on the indices and hands a little bit. And the hands actually, when you look really close, it's difficult to show under, under this setting on the camera, a little bit of roughness around the underside of it. But to be honest, I'm being really picky because to the naked eye, it's, it is extremely good. I like the proportions of this dial. Look at how all the indices line up really neatly with uh, the length of the hands and things like that. But the good thing is, look at that date wheel. That cuts perfectly and is it aligns. Like it was meant to be there. It's that inner, uh, track that you've got going around here I love how that date wheel cuts perfectly into that it doesn't because it could easily have looked like it was lost over here like it, it was looking on the um, Zeppelin watch I reviewed which had the same movement as this this case size works better um, for that movement somehow you know with the, the date window is in the right location obviously this index here is slightly different size to the one at the 6 the 9 and the 12 but the fact it's the same size as the others here, so it just seems to blend in and work. It's 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 very neat. I love the subtle star uh, starburst, sunburst effect on the dial. That is nice. It sometimes looks silvery. Sometimes it looks almost ivory, but it does definitely play with the light really well. That's the thing I like about this kind of watch: is those polished indices and the polished case, the dome sapphire, which distorts and plays with the light. You've seen in the outdoor section when I shot that. This this really does look good in, in, in the daylight. Um, negatives. I think these lugs could curve down a bit better. Conform to the wrist. It, it is, I'm being really picky because this actually wears really well on my 7-inch wrist, as you can see. If you've got a bigger wrist than me, this watch will still work, I think, for you. And if you've got a smaller wrist, it's still got a relatively short 46.3 lug to lug. So it works really well, you know. And... It's a bit of a strap monster because you put it on black, you can put it on grey, you put it on this nice padded brown, you put it on a heritage style, vintage. There's so many options you could go for because of this just lovely crisp design. And I think that it's really nice to have an homage as well. That's not like all the other homages you can get, you know, dive watches or, you know, from big brands that you've always heard of and things like that. It's nice to have a Longines uh homage it's actually from something from the 50s you know it's it's quirky it's different it's interesting it's it's nice to get something that looks like a thousand or two thousand dollar or pound watch for just over a hundred pounds so it's great spec really well finished reliable movement you don't notice any rotor wobble like some people worry about it's got a good solid rugged movement in there and another cool thing i forgot to mention earlier in the stats and the specs this case back 
that is sapphire as well. Bonus little feature there. I tested it with my diamond selector. That is sapphire. How cool is that? You get that £140 watch. You've got sapphire, high beat movement, beautiful high polish. It's not something you see every day. This kind of case design, a vintage style watch, but it's brand new. The reliable Japanese movement. Dome sapphire, fantastic. So overall, I'm really impressed. And I can't really find too much to fault with it, to be honest. I think this is another huge win from escapement time. And I think if you're looking for a dressier watch that you could get away wearing every day, and you, you have a budget of under £200, not much more than £100, you would be satisfied with this if you're okay with maybe, like my wife says, it looks like an old man watch. But, you know, if you're into watches, sometimes it's nice to look back and appreciate the sort of purity of design from that era. And that's what I like about this. Maybe I, I, I was, I'm from another era because I love these as well. This would be coming up in another review. I love this. This is a the heritage reissue of the Timex Marlin, which I just adore. So, see, it's a tiny little 34mm watch, but there is a real trend for these types of watches. And you can see why. They're just so elegant and beautiful. And look how they play with the light. And they're good fun and cheap as well. Cheap as chips, really, for this kind of look. So I would recommend one of these big time. I really hope you've enjoyed this review I've done, because I've enjoyed making it. I always love sharing these little finds with you and hope you get some information and just see my perspective on a watch that I've bought for my collection and see what you think. So... Don't forget to like, subscribe, and definitely drop some comments. I love to interact with you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, bye for now.